our overall banner, how we describe Chuck and Trish is amazing grace, not just in um, the failure that we're going to be talking about, but in every aspect, like from the time that we met <laughs> to this day today, it's just like, a, it's a constant work. His hand is just constantly there. I think my earliest memories, my, my family, my parents delved in recreational drug use. They were alcoholic. Um, they were abusive towards each other and towards my brothers and I. Um, we traveled a lot. Our, my childhood was chaos. It was full of nothing ever being the same. I had this vision of what would be normal and I wanted it. Like there was always something in the back of my mind that was just looking for um, the normalcy I saw in other people, in other families. By the time I was 15, my parents had um, gone off so deep that they had just abandoned the, the, the children. We all kind of went our separate ways and um, were taken in by friends from school, um, were homeless for a time. When I was 15, I had gotten in a relationship with a 20 year old and got pregnant and had an abortion. And um, that just was part of the deep spiral that I, I, that began that summer. I tried to commit suicide shortly after that and God saved me from that. I did not know God at the time. He was still um, just a curse word. I had no clue who God or who Jesus Christ was. In the next six months, the Lord began um, pointing out a girl in our high school to me who was a little different than the rest of the girls, and it intrigued me. Um, she had a beauty and a peace um, about her. She wasn't popular, she wasn't outgoing, but she drew me, God drew me to her, and she shared Jesus with me, and I got saved through her sharing. And she ended up being my husband's sister. So, <laughs> so after I got saved, um, her family became a part of my life in trying to help me find a place to live. I moved in with them for a short period of time, and they could see that there was an attraction. <laughs> and decided to move me out <laughs> quickly. <laughs> so I moved in with another family and kind of bounced around a little bit. So that was like a whirlwind summer. I had now turned 16. I was almost um, 17. And Chuck proposed to me and we got married within three months of our first date. And it was the day after I turned 17. Two children came into a marriage from two different completely different backgrounds and brought two completely different frameworks to the table. And it wasn't pretty. We've often said it was the Brady Bunch meets the Adams family. And uh, that's our joke. But it's looking back, we can, we can see clearly that we had, we were lost as far as our ability to see God in um, her tragedy. My expectations, which were that if be like the Brady Bunch. It would be the way I was raised to you sit down and work things out when you have a problem and you have a family conference. Um, you don't let things explode, but um, neither one of us knew how to how to carry out um, anything biblical. Though we were in the Bible and in a Bible-believing church, we just didn't understand how how to navigate those waters that were so um, divisive, so ugly at times. We got married, um, and 11 months later, we had our first child and every six months after that we were pregnant with our next and so by the time I was 21 we had four children ages three and under and my husband was full-time in Bible college studying to be a pastor <laughs> and working full-time so we had ministries during yeah. that time in the church I was in yeah. choir we both served um, ladies yeah. ministries men's ministries led the college, college prayer class mission trips so, we did a lot, so busy. we felt like God would be very happy with us, and He would bless us very well for it. <laughs> the Bible-believing church we were in was very rules-based, and that was very comfortable for me because I came from so, so much chaos that um, for people just to tell me what I needed to do to be right was very, like, I, I accepted that very well. I was just, 
okay, tell me what to do. So God loves me and I'm really good with that. And so I didn't learn how to have a real intimate relationship with Christ until uh, the last eight years that God has brought us to North Hills. There was always the, the secret mm -hmm. of um, anger. Um, I covered my anger with uh, passivity. Just If I don't talk about it, it'll go away. Or if I can try to make things better, this will be smoothed out and we'll, we'll, we'll clear this hurdle and maybe this will be the last, the last one we have to jump over. Um, so we would, I would hide that, um, what was going on in our home, the anger and the, the explosive uh, tensions and um, just a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And as years went on and at this point we had uh, moved up to the Pacific Northwest, where we're from back there from uh, college in Southern California, Planet Church. And a um, number of years into that ministry, the bitterness just, just began to grow. The church was flourishing, but we weren't as a couple. Um, by all appearances, it looked great, but the religiosity that I had served my fear. And it helped me cover my fear. It, it, it served it very well where I could keep my image and yet know in my heart there was vengeful anger towards my wife, um, hurt, anger, severe anger at God extreme anger with God, disappointment with God. How could he allow this? Um, if I do the right things, if I put the coins in the cosmic vending machine, I should be able to punch what I want and get it out. And it seemed like I was putting all the right coins in and more coins and shoving them in faster before I knew it, I was shaking the machine and kicking the machine and threw it over. I got angry with God and it came a point um, in my despair that I just gave up and I told him if he didn't care I no longer cared either about anything or anyone um, and it uh, wasn't long after that that I committed adultery on my wife there was some time that I covered that and um, it was a number of years afterwards that the Lord um, uncovered me and um, broke my heart and just brought me into the light where I, I could no longer carry the burden of what I was what I was concealing. And I had to stand, break that to my wife as well as to my, my kids and my congregation and let them know that I was resigning and leaving the ministry. I now can smile when he says that part about broke my heart. Speaking of himself, how God broke him because I know how much of um, how much that had to happen for us to be where we are today. We fought hard um, and then we learned to hide it all because my husband was a pastor. We couldn't let people see who we really were at home. So when the, his, the fall for ministry came and the devastation to our marriage and our friends and our, our family, um, all the hurt came. Um, you know, we had a decision to make. We knew we could either divorce, um, and for some reason, for such a hard person in my background, that was something I told him, if you ever, <laughs> I'll be gone. You don't even know, I'll be out of here. He was very afraid to come to me for a very long time because he knew um, I would leave. Um, so from the moment he told me, I mean, it was a godsend that I was on that plane and headed to the arms of my, my own, the only mother I ever knew. We made a choice early on that we were going to fight for our marriage, for our family, and we wanted God to get the glory. And at that time, I don't think either one of us even knew what that was going to entail. A lot of pain. Um, I went on a journey searching for women in the church who had gone through um, adultery in their marriage and who would be able to just tell me okay it's gonna just hurt like this for eight more weeks and then you're gonna be in this phase I just wanted someone to give me some idea of is there relief when does the relief start happening and I couldn't find anyone in the church willing to share if they had gone through this and made it which I thought was really sad um, it was an incredibly sad thing for me to, I felt like I was walking it alone. Um, on another plane ride, God gave me a stranger sitting next to me who was a, a believer. And I don't know, I don't remember how I opened up the story. I'm sure I was crying, <laughs> I cried a lot in those days. 
And she asked me if I was okay, and I, I shared with her what was going on. My husband was a pastor, and he committed adultery, and we've lost our church and our friends and our home, and everything's gone. Um, our relationship is just, I don't know how to trust. I don't know how to believe. And we were trapped on a plane side by side for five hours. And she was a Christian woman who actually started a ministry, helping women to just be able to um, understand that each each path is different. No path is going to be the same. But the outcome and the ending with two hearts that are willing to lay it all out and to, um, as bad as it hurts and as embarrassing as it is, um, to just put it all out there and say, God, we're willing. We just want, we want our marriage. We want our family. I had to let go of my self-made images. Like when this happened, it was my God, who was my husband, my children, and my image. Had to be stripped away so God could find me. So I could, I could find God. So I could really, for the first time in my life, seek out my Papa and my Abba Father. The view that I had of God was one that was steeped in legalism, even though I thought I was so balanced. I, because I wasn't like other fundamentalists, um, and I use that term in the proper sense, just I really believed that we had more grace. But I had a lot of doctrine, but I, I didn't know, I didn't continue the way that I started, which was just simple faith and trust in, in the goodness of God and His sacrifice. And I, I, I veered into that, the, the conditional, if I, if I do good, this God owes me something. Now I see everything I ever needed was on the cross, and the ultimate definition and display of love is right there at Calvary. What it is to know the love of God is to see it on the cross and know that all my sins are in the future, and He knew that. Things that were doctrinal now become personal. Um, and it's so different. A, a degree in theology means nothing without knowing without knowing God. And um, that's become real. It's so, it's so personal and meaningful to be forgiven and to know that the gospel really does cover every sin. I'm sure I thought of myself for many years and steeped in religion I was better than other people. And this is what God used because for me, it was something that I didn't believe I was, I would be capable of. Um, years gone by, I would have never believed it. Um, had no desire, and yet God showed me that the depth of my heart was as wicked, way more than I than I than I realized the depth of my own depravity. But but realizing that we are all the same, that that the Bible is 100% accurate. We're all broken. We're we're all depraved. But that's exactly why Christ came. I was thinking of the, the passage in Ephesians that we're, we're going through in lead, which is um, Paul's prayer to the Ephesians that they would, that they would, by the power of the Spirit of God, know the presence of Christ in their hearts. And that with all the saints, that they would know the incredible, um, unconditional love of God. Beyond our comprehension is His love. And yet, He wants us to know that it's beyond comprehension, that, that it is unfathomable, um, eternal, and, it, and it's love. And that's what it would have to be to save us because there is no difference in any of us. Probably the greatest thing we've found coming um, to North Hills has been that truly the ground at the foot of the cross is level. I think we just began digging through the ashes, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, not, it's not like God just, it was this, this beautiful thing and it just, we arose out. Yeah. But we got in the ashes, we started digging and we started trying to find and it was dirty and it was hard work and it was uncomfortable. But that's where we started finding the beauty, mm -hmm. getting in and getting dirty in our own lives and in our own hearts. Part of me was thinking that once those things became exposed, um, the insecurities would be worse, but they're not. You know, it's like God just, he goes, that's, that's it. I want, I wanted that. Give it to me. And then he just brings love in, replaces the ugliness with the newness of life. Um, with his spirit, the ability to love people in a way that I never knew I could love people. If you just keep seeking and keep asking and keep accepting what God is trying to teach you as his love for you and not as punishment, I think that's huge.
because to me, from where we came from, a grace-filled church was punishment. It's very weird. It was a lot of tearing down for me. It was just a lot of tearing down those things that I thought made me less of a believer, less of a Christian, less of a, a lover of Jesus, mm. only to find that the more God tore down, the more love he put in. I could love people at a, in a deeper level than I could ever love before, including my husband and my children, people who have hurt me deeply. Um, I have an incredible heart to reconcile with, with people. I just want to see the whole, this whole thing play out for God's glory, for His glory alone. Thank you.